Hi, this is Chrissy from hangtodryapplique.com and we're here today to bring you another brief little fun tutorial of one of the designs that we like to use frequently in our own shop for our own customers and that would be our fun little applique name shirts. These are very popular with our customers because they can really be customized not only with the child's name but with an appropriate saying underneath. Um, we've done birthday girl, we've done mommy's girl, we've done daddy's boy, um, we've done big brother, big sister, and actually big sister is what we're going to be doing here today for a little customer named Jensen. So I've gone ahead and navigated here in our Embird Manager to the particular applique font that we're going to be using today. I've gone ahead and chosen the very first letter which you can see over here is the J. And what we want to do from this point is go ahead and launch Embird Editor, which is going to allow us to merge the other letters of Jensen and add the embroidery underneath. So Editor has launched for us and you can see right away that what we have here is an inappropriate hoop size for what we want to be doing today. We need to right off the bat change this hoop size. So we want to click here. By default, Embird will normally bring up this standard one tab which will give you most of the hoops for your home embroidery machines. We want to go ahead and click on custom. We like to use a specialty fast frame for our applique name shirts that is 11 by 7 and you can see, whoops, you can clearly see that I messed that up. It's 11 <laughs> by 7, there we go. And you can see that that's given us a more appropriate hoop size. Now, for me, I have to be able to visually see what I'm working on. I'm going to show you in a moment how we use Embird's alignment tool to help us align these letters, but it will drive me bonkers if the letters are piled on top of each other. I just can't quite focus when it's a mess like that. So I want to go ahead and move it over to the left in approximately the spot that I'm going to ultimately want it to be. We're going to go ahead and click the merge button and that's going to bring up uh, this merge box that will allow us to navigate to the particular design that we want to merge. In this case, again, we're doing Jensen and it's all the applique letters. So we're going to go ahead and choose the E and I'm going to show you a neat little trick here. At this point we could click OK and it would pop the E up over here on our screen and then we would go through the same process to merge the remaining letters of our design or you can go ahead and click the control button and go through and select the other elements of the design that you know that you're going to require. So we need the, N, the E, we'll also need an N, we'll need an S, We'll need the E again, but we're going to go ahead and duplicate that within the frame. And again, we'd need the N to finish off Jensen, but we're going to go ahead and also duplicate that within the frame. So you can release the control button and click OK. And you can see that it's given us here a stack of merged letters. What I like to do at this point is go ahead and separate them out to roughly the spot where I know that they're going to want to be because it just gives me a nice visual of how I'm going to want to align these letters when I use Embird's alignment tool. Alright, so the next thing to do is to go ahead and duplicate the remaining letters that we need. You can click on the E, right click, and it'll pop up some choices here to manipulate your file. You want to go ahead and duplicate that particular design, drag it out to about where you want it to be, and then let's duplicate the N, and I'll show you a different way to do that here, because remember when we first merged all of these letters, they came in kind of jumbled like this, and it would be hard to choose just the N to go ahead and duplicate. So a good way to do that would be to come over here to the right-hand column, and you can see each individual element of our design here. Go ahead and click on the N, right click on it, and you'll see that it gives us those same options, and that you're able to go ahead and duplicate it from there. The shortcut key to duplicate, if you like shortcut keys, is a control and a D and that will go ahead and duplicate your selected design element for you as well. So you can go ahead and see roughly how we're going to have this design laid out. Again that's not an important step, it's just something that I choose to do because it helps me visually to better organize my thoughts about where I'm going with the design. From this point 
what I would do is I would go ahead and draw a box by clicking on our grid here and drawing it out and you can see that that selected all of the elements of our design for us and that's going to help us here as we choose to align our individual design elements. So we can go ahead and click on this and what you're going to see is that this is a good start but that ultimately we're going to have to do some tweaking to this just based upon how we want a particular design to look. As far as alignment, we would like to align these equally along the horizon. So we would click space equally and then vertically you can make a, a decision here. Would you like to align the tops of the letters? Well, that might not be a good choice because you can see clearly that the J is a different size than the other letters that we're going to be working with. If we align the centers, it will find the mathematical center of each letter and align them across an invisible line. We could choose to align the bottoms of the letters, which is roughly how we have it now. We can choose to space them equally or center in the hoop. I'm going to go ahead and choose to align the bottoms. And you can see that it's done a little bit of a minor tweak here to our design. Now go ahead and center that in the hoop. Things that I'm unhappy with here that I would prefer to be a little bit different are the ends. I would like the N to drop down a little bit further on the line here. And then the J. And again, this is just a matter of what looks good to you. You can choose to align the top. You can choose to align the bottom. I sort of choose to align the middle of the N there. So there we have it. Now, as we're looking at this, an important step for us here at Hang to Dry is Mr. Hang to Dry really appreciates it when I go ahead and reconfigure these designs so that it's giving him the placement stitch all in one step. So what I'm going to do is isolate those placement stitches so that we can join them together and they will stitch in, in sequence for him and in one step. So the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and reorder these letters. You can see when we did our merging and our duplicating, they didn't necessarily line up in the manner that we see them here as we've placed them in our hoop. So we wanna go ahead and click on the N and drag it, release it, and insert it before this E. Again, grab the S, pull it up, release it and insert it before the E. And now you can see that we have them stitching in an appropriate order. The next issue as we get ready to do this is you can see that the zigzag finished edge on these stitches is going to stitch out of order here on the J. So as we preview the stitching order on this, we can see that that's, that's not going to stitch at all the way that we need. So we need to go ahead and modify that a little bit what we need to do is swap the sewing order here on these elements. So hover over the particular step that you're needing to change, right click, and let's go ahead and swap the sewing order. And we'll need to do that one more time here so that our zigzag stitch is the last to stitch. Swap sewing order, and now you can see that it matches up with the rest of the letters that we're working with today. From this point, I would probably choose to go ahead and resize this design a little bit, again by choosing all of our letters, and then going ahead and dragging. And that's about my comfort zone with resizing. I wouldn't want to go much further in either direction with resizing without going and actually redigitizing the file. But Ember does a decent job of recalibrating the density on these stitches as it's resizing for us. It wouldn't allow you to resize it again. It's going to tell you, whoa, partner, you don't want to do that because it will introduce some errors into the, into the stitch density. So we don't want to do that a second time. That's just an important thing to remember. From here, what we want to do is we want to isolate all of our placement stitches. So go ahead, hover over it, right click it, separate the color. Do that here as well because again, this navy is representing our placement stitches. Separating the color clear down the line by hovering, right clicking, separate color, and now you can see that we've gone ahead and we've isolated all of those placement stitches. In order to join them into one fluid step, we're going to want to reorder these again quickly so that they are all stitching one after the other. Grab the first design element, hold your shift key, 
select the last and you can see that it selected all of those placement stitches for us right click and choose to join them and you can see that now that that has created one step for our placement stitches which Mr. Hang to Dry really appreciates he prefers that I change these to black because that's what we use here at Hang to Dry for our placement stitches. It's just a great way of communicating between the two of us where there's two of us working on a design that, hey buddy, this is the placement stitch. So he knows what he's looking for. Then I wanna go ahead and choose the remaining design elements and join those. And then remember that these purple stitches are our tack down stitches. So we wanna go ahead and choose to, I personally, choose to change these to a white because they will peek out a little bit from underneath the zigzag stitches. From this point we want to change them to a series of appropriate colors for each letter just depending on perhaps the fabric scraps that you might be using or the particular colors that a customer has requested they're designed to be. Whoops. And then from this point we are ready to add in our lettering underneath Jensen. So we want to launch Font Engine. We like to use Steinweiss script on quite a few of our designs here at Hang to Dry. We'd want to go ahead and type in Big Sister. And then on this particular font, the first thing that we want to do is change from a plain fill with an outline to an auto column with no outline, which is going to give us nice satin stitching. Now on this particular font, I just happen to know that it stitches better from experience if we change the density a little bit there. And go ahead and let Ember digitize that. And we'll drag it to where we'd like it to be within our hoop. We could resize it at this point if we wanted to. You can see that there are many different things we could do. We want to go ahead and undo that because I happen to like the size that we made this here. Change the color to an appropriate color that coordinates with the rest of our design. And then when you click on the 3D matte button at the bottom of your screen here, you can see that that's what our finished and manipulated design will look like as we stitch it out for our customer. So that is how we here at Hang to Dry create our fun little applique name shirts. We hope that you've enjoyed our tutorial and that you'll consider signing up for our newsletter and coming back to visit us for applique shirts and fun applique designs for the home embroidery market. And we're glad to have you today. Thanks a bunch.